What is the risk of severe COVID-19 in people with MS taking the drugs Gelenia and Mazen? These two drugs are developed and marketed by the company Novartis, who is the author of this publication. So this is a registry from the drug company. And of course, you may think they have a conflict of interest, which is true. And you could look at all the authors. They all work for Novartis. However, this article actually makes the drug look really, really bad and unsafe. Now, I'm not trying to sound the alarm here. It's kind of unusual to me that they actually publish publish this, I actually think the article is significantly biased against the drug. And I'll talk about my general thoughts and my own experiences and people taking these medications who got COVID-19 in my own clinic at the end of the video. Now, the reason I say that is two things. One of them, this is a study that only looks at people through the December 27, 2020. So this is looking at people who have not been vaccinated against COVID-19. The second thing, this is a registry, meaning that they just take reports of people with MS who have happen to be taking these medications who had COVID-19 and their physicians or healthcare providers reported it to Novartis. And of course, there's going to be a huge bias. You're not looking at people who had asymptomatic infections who didn't get tested. A lot of people will not report cases of people who had very mild symptoms. I've had patients taking these medications who had COVID-19. I did not report a single case to Novartis simply because I'm busy. I can't report every single cold to drug companies, and that's not my primary concern in my medical practice. So anyways, there are literally hundreds of thousands of people with MS who have taken these drugs, but they only looked at 283 cases. There were a little bit more, but some were suspected cases, not confirmed cases, and there was a lot of incomplete reporting, so they really only had full data with the outcome of COVID-19 in 161 cases of COVID-19. So out of hundreds of thousands of people, with MS, taking Jeleni, who possibly caught COVID-19, we're only looking at 161. And again, I think there's a huge bias against the drug. Now, they said the mean age is 44 years with a range from 11 to 69 years old. So out of these 161, the sort of top line headline is that six were asymptomatic, no symptoms. 100, the majority, had mild symptoms, and they define in the article that mild means no hospitalization and no shortness of breath. 32 had moderate symptoms, which means either they had shortness of breath or they were hospitalized, but for less than seven days, and they did not have low oxygen and 50 cases in total required hospitalization. And they also talk about some statistics for saponamod. And they actually note in the article a little bit of a difference between the average age and level of disability. For whatever reason, there was a trend towards people getting saponamod or mazen being older and more disabled at baseline, which could change the results a little bit. Now, one thing that I disagree with in the article is sort of the summary comment, which is basically saying the risk of more severe COVID-19 in patients receiving fungal or Sabanabon, in other words, Jelenia and Mazen, respectively, seems to be similar to that reported in the general population and the MS population with COVID-19. This may be true if you look back a long time ago with some of the original reports suggesting a very high case fatality rate, but overall, these numbers look really bad. So 50 people out of 161 being hospitalized for people who are an average age of 44, that's a really, really high rate of hospitalization. Of course, as I said, in real life, I believe it's significantly less than that. So let's go ahead and look at their data. Again, the methodology, I'm not going to go over it. This is people who reported cases to Novartis. So it's very selectively biased, but it gives us a rough idea. So this is the people taking Jelenia. Let's look at what happened to them. So it's based on the severity of the illness, asymptomatic, mild, moderate, severe, critical, or not reported. Let's ignore the not reported. And then they color coded into what happened to them. Are they recovering? Did their condition stay stable? Did they get worsened? And a small number of people who passed away, fatal cases. So six people were asymptomatic. Of course, a lot of people who are asymptomatic don't get tested. The majority were mild. Most of whom were recovering, almost all of whom. And 32 were moderate. And you can see all of them were either stable or recovering. There were 14 that were severe, and many of those were also recovering, but one had worsened. And there were five critical, there were a total of nine critical cases. And so these are people who require a mechanical ventilator. And you can see that four of them passed away, and five of them recovered or were recovering, which is pretty typical of people with severe COVID 19 requiring a mechanical ventilator. Unfortunately, the mortality rate is quite high, around 50% in some 
institutions. And so then let's look at the saponamide data. So both of these drugs are S1P phosphate receptor modulators. And what they do is they trap the lymphocytes, the B and T cells, within the lymph nodes. So they're similar drugs. They work in the exact same way. Generally speaking, even though the white blood cells on blood tests and people with MS taking these drugs are very low, people tend not to get a lot of viral infections. So that was what was concerned about prior to the FDA approval of Gelenia in 2010. People were worried about cancer, lymphoma, infections, but in reality, with these drugs, the risk seems to be quite low. When we do blood tests, we can see very, very low levels of lymphocytes. People can kind of look like they have AIDS. They can have a very low CD4 positive lymphocyte count, but they tend not to get a lot of infections. No one knows exactly why, one theory is that the effector T cells, the T cells that are most active in fighting infections, are able to get out of the lymphocytes. So even though they look low, the suppression of the immune system is not that severe. Now, of course, there are some viral infections that are associated with COVID-19, such as shingles, and very rare cases of PML, the infection of the brain caused by the JC virus, though the risk has been estimated to be around 1 in 20,000. Now, it's previously been reported that medications such as Jelenia and Mazen increase the risk of COVID-19, and also concerning is that people taking these medications have very, very low levels of antibodies after infection and after vaccination. So literally, you get the vaccine, you get tested, there's a less than 20% 20, uh, 20 chance that you even have anti-spike protein antibodies. The same is true with nucleocapsid antibodies after natural infections. However, what is the risk of reinfection? What is the risk of infection after vaccination? Probably not all that high. I'll explain that a little bit in a moment. But first, the saponamod data. So, of course, saponamod is much less commonly prescribed overall than Jelenia, just because Jelenia has been around a long time. But here are their data. So, again, asymptomatic, mild, moderate, severe, critical. And you can see that there was two asymptomatic cases. There were 17 mild cases. There were five moderate cases, all of whom were recovering or not reported. There was one severe case, and there were three people with critical COVID-19, and unfortunately, all three passed away, and there were 16 where the outcome was not reported. Now, of course, the justification of the top line results is kind of explained in the discussion. And they talk about the hospitalization rate and the fatality rate, and they compare it to some older studies in China and some early studies in the United States looking at the case fatality rate. In my opinion, this is very biased. I think the reality is that these drugs do increase the risk of COVID-19. It's just by not as much as you would think based on this article. And again, they mention a difference between saponamod and fingolimod, where people taking saponamod were older, mean age 44, and had a higher level of disability, EDSS of 5.4, compared to Jelenia cohort, where the mean age was 37, and the mean EDSS was much lower at only 2.3. And of course, this affects the results also. But really, the, the data were pretty similar in the people getting Jelenia and the people getting Mazent. It's highly unlikely one drug would be safer or more dangerous than the other. Okay, so let's look at the people who passed away in this study. And so they looked at whatever data they had, age, the type of therapy they had, the duration, and they also noted whether or not the person was a healthcare professional, HCP. And you can see that several of these people were healthcare professionals. Uh, so for instance, this is someone who is 65 to 70, they give an age range just for privacy. They were a healthcare professional. They had been on the drug for eight years. Uh, they didn't say the type of MS, and they say they had multiple other risk factors, and they had an EDSS of six, meaning they used a cane to walk 100 meters. They were treated with hydroxychloroquine and some antibiotics, ceftriaxone and azithromycin, and passed away. There was one healthcare provider in their late 40s, and the duration of therapy was not reported. It's someone with relapsing MS, though they had the comorbidity of mixed connective tissue disease, and they didn't really talk about the complications that were linked to COVID-19. There was someone who was fairly young in their late 30s, a non-healthcare provider on the drug for four years with active SPMS. By the way, these are all cases of people taking Jelenia, and they apparently passed away from acute respiratory distress syndrome. So this is very concerning, someone in their late 30s passing away from COVID-19. COVID-19. 
Uh, this is a healthcare provider in their early 60s who had been on the drug for 23 months, and they don't really say anything about their comorbidities, just that they had acute respiratory distress syndrome. Then moving to the three people who passed away taking Mazent, there was someone who was greater than 50, nothing is reported. Someone who was greater than 70 who was a healthcare provider, nothing reported except that they had MS. And someone in their early 60s who is also a healthcare provider, but they had significant comorbidities, including being morbidly obese, having diabetes diabetes, and having hypertension. So, you know, this is concerning, the rate of fatality. They talk about, you know, seven people pass away, but there were less than 300. That works out to a case fatality rate greater than 2%, which is definitely greater than the general population, definitely greater than people with multiple sclerosis, in my opinion. Now, I said at the beginning, don't be too concerned. Why did I say that? Well, as I said, there's a huge bias in the cases that get reported. My experience is actually pretty good with these drugs. A lot of my patients who are on these drugs who have had COVID-19 have had a mild course, particularly if they're young and healthy overall. It is definitely my experience that a lot of them don't have antibodies, even if they got COVID, and definitely not if they got the vaccination, although you have to make sure it's the right antibody, that it's the anti-spike protein antibody, not the anti-nucleocapsid antibody, which would be expected to be negative after vaccination. My experience with these drugs is actually fairly good, so I would not be nearly, nearly this pessimistic. Unfortunately, with B-cell depleting drugs, rituximab, ocrevus, casimpta, ofatumumab, intravenous ofatumumab, arzera, my experience is worse. I think there's a much greater risk of severe COVID-19. And in fact, I have three patients who received two doses of mRNA vaccines and still got hospitalized with COVID-19, taking B-cell depleting agents, though they all did recover. But all three were relatively young and reasonably healthy. Anyways, I hope I'm not causing too much fear. Uh, I do think the, the sort of end of the line result is these drugs, Mazent, Gelenia, they increase the risk of COVID-19. This is a cohort that's unvaccinated. It's likely highly biased by reporting more severe cases. You know, if you're young, healthy, vaccinated, taking these drugs, your risk is probably still low. The main thing that you can do is get the COVID-19 vaccine and get the booster. Of course, anyone taking any kind of immunosuppressant drug should be recommended to get three days doses of an mRNA vaccine. Arguably, the Moderna vaccine is the most potent and should be recommended. And in my institution, we'll actually give the full dose of the Moderna vaccine to people who have an immunosuppressed state instead of the normal booster, which is a half dose. So I'd be interested to know your thoughts or suggestions for future videos in the comments below.